All right. Welcome back to Solve Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, we're going to continue our discussion today about flavonoids. So just to recap from the last video, in case you mixed it, flavonoids are naturally occurring compounds in plants. They're found in things like tea, grapes, wine, berries, and a host of other foods. There are six different subtypes of flavonoids. We focused on flavanols, specifically cocoa flavanols, in the last video, talking about heart disease. Now, in that particular video, what we talked about was the study that was published showing that there was a reduction in total cardiovascular events by 10%, and total cardiovascular death went down by 27% in the group that was taking cocoa flavanols. But today's topic is all about brain health and what's cocoa flavanols got to do with it. Well, what we know is that flavanol intake, what's so remarkable about taking flavanols in is that it actually leads to two things. First, it leads to faster brain oxygenation going on. And two is it leads to greater brain oxygenation going on. And this has been shown in a number of studies where there's been exposure to high levels of carbon dioxide. So remember, when you are breathing in, you're trying to breathe in the oxygen, and then you're trying to exhale the carbon dioxide as it builds up inside a body. And what's fascinating is that the flavanols can actually help your brain to recover faster going on. Now, in terms of cocoa flavanols going on, what's really interesting is, is that several studies even though they are smaller in nature, have shown that when you give it to humans, we're moving away from animal-based studies now, but in humans, what you end up seeing is, is that their endothelial function, remember endothelial cells are the cells lining your blood vessels. They actually improve very rapidly. They can expand and contract very easily going on. And part of that recovery function is really having to do with nitric oxide. So remember, Nitric oxide is what helps your blood vessels to dilate. If they dilate, they're going to bring in more blood supply. Blood supply has all of the wonderful nutrients that your body needs going on. So that's where this becomes really interesting. So today's study is actually a randomized, it's a double blind within subject placebo control study. And what they were doing was it was actually an acute two hour study going on. They wanted to see the effects of cocoflavanols on brain function and sort of the brain blood response going on. And so what they ended up doing in this study was they measured the brain reactivity using a breathing challenge. And they had 18 participants essentially receiving either high amounts of cocoflavanol or low amounts of cocoflavanol in drinks going on. And in each one of the visits they did, each visit was spread apart by about two weeks. They had them do one or the other arm going on. And the breathing challenge that they would have these folks doing was that after they took the cocoa drink going on, they would actually have them breathe air that was about 5% carbon dioxide. What's 5% carbon dioxide? That is roughly two, uh, actually 100 times more carbon dioxide than just breathing in normal air. So it's a substantial amount of CO2 that's going inside your body, that's going inside your brain. And what they want to see is, what is that impact of cocoflavanols when it comes to all of this carbon dioxide going inside your brain? And in addition to that, in this particular study, they also did MRI brain scans where they were able to see all sorts of areas of the brain lighting so they could get an idea. In addition to doing all of those things, what made this study really wonderful is how precise they were. Every visit, the participants came in, they checked their blood pressure going on they checked how much their blood flow was going through their brachial artery. So we call that flow-mediated dilation going on. They also were looking at frontal cortex, the front portion of your brain, how much oxygen it was getting at rest and during the breathing challenge. So that being all the baseline, let's get into the fun stuff, which is what the heck did they find? So what they found was in the group that was getting the flavonol, the high cocoa flavonols going on, those folks actually had stronger and faster brain oxygenation responses going on. In other words, not only did they recover and get more oxygen in the brain faster, but they were actually able to get a stronger response going on. The other thing that was interesting was that the same participants who got the high cocoflavanols going on actually did better on the most challenging types of cognitive tests going on. In fact, they solve problems 11% quicker than they did at baseline after low flavanol cocoa going on.
So the interesting stuff in this study is, is that it was only when the level of those cognitive tests were really high did the researchers really see the benefits of cocoflavanols? So when you look at some of the other studies in the past where they didn't see any benefits to cognitive function, part of that was is you have to challenge the brain. When you challenge the brain, it starts to consume oxygen very rapidly. And it's during that challenge where cocoflavanols really end up shining going on. The other thing is, is and this is really important to understand, is is that not only do flavanols increase the total levels of blood oxygenation, they lead to faster oxygenation than the group that got the low cocoflavanols or placebo going on. How much faster? An entire minute faster going on. So what's the bottom line? Cocoflavanols have lots of data emerging. They're great for things like your heart going on. They're great for a number of things, including inflammation, improving blood flow going on. And the data is also showing that they're great for your brain health going on. Now, if you're wondering what are some of the best ways to get cocoflavanols, well, remember, if you're somebody who loves chocolate, the problem with chocolate is is when you get chocolate, it's already been processed. And all that roasting, alkalization, all of that can actually remove a lot of the flavanols going on. So part of that is, is you want to get like cocoa powder that's unprocessed and make that a part of your diet. That's what I get. I put that in my smoothies. It tastes absolutely wonderful. The other thing is, is don't forget to add foods that are rich in cocoa flavanols. What are those foods? Grapes, green tea, apples, berries, pulses, and all sorts of other things going on. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. As always, if you've got a question, you've got a topic you want to know about, let me know and I'll be sure to add it to one of the upcoming videos. Other than that, I will see you guys next time.